All right. Good afternoon, class. Welcome to our music class. So for today, we're going to have a simple recitation. So um, may I request any one of you can identify what is music? Anyone? How about, how about we volunteer Miss Yuan from China? What do you understand if you heard the word music? Uh, sir, sorry, my English is bad. <laughs> Don't worry, you just express yourself. Music, uh, just beautiful voice. Beautiful voice, <laughs> okay. Good, that's correct, that's correct. We're talking, we're talking about music, we're talking about beautiful sound, beautiful voice. How about... Um, Miss Yula Melchor. Um, music is an art, sir. Music is an art. Yes, one of the arts. Like we have art in dancing, singing, and performing. Sino pa? What else? What can you say about what is a very basic question? What is music? Last. Okay, last tayo, ha, guys. So may we ask anyone? Can share what is music? Oh no, just like the rain. There are droplets of water on the roof. So there's a synchronize of synchronize of rhythms of droplets. So that's still a part. It's a tempo. There's a rhythm. So what can you say about Music. Anyone? So I volunteer Miss Trisha May or Suwa. What can you say about music? Um, music, sir. Um, I agree with the answer of um, Miss Yula and Miss Yuan, sir. And also, um, it expresses ideas and emotions. Very good. It expresses ideas, emotions, especially if you are going to play a certain musical background. So in short, if we're talking about music, this is something pleasing to the ears. If you are enjoying the music, it's something pleasing to you that is considered music. But if it's the opposite, just like it disturbs you, it irritates you, that is the Called as what? Anong tawag nun? Noise. It's noise. Noise, yes. So, if you're talking about music, it's something is pleasing. If you're talking about noise, it is unpleasing to the ears. As so, simply so, as that. Sir, sorry to interrupt you. So, what do you think about metal music then? They're, they're considered noise? No, it's still a music. <laughs> metal music. For all metal... Uh, for all, call this, uh, call this. There are certain um, categories of metal music. So there are popular metal music, not like we have now, rock rock and music talaga. In yon. But if we're talking about music, something is uh, very interesting to an individual. That is music to him or to her. Okay? So it's still part of music, metal. Because one of the genres of music is also metal especially in the um, uh, this 20th century. Just like, for example, oh, we play a classical music with our era now. Now, ah, I'll play you music. Oh, ganyan. Chabin, Beethoven. Some of you will be bored. Why? Because you're not, you're not used with that kind of music. But, it, it will depend with the individual, actually. But we're talking about using something is pleasing to your ears. All right? Is that okay? I think so. <laughs> so you can use the, guys, the, the reaction button there. By If you press the reaction, you can click the thumbs up button. dito, guys? Can we see? Clap as well as thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Okay, so for today, I'm going to show you 
let's go back wait lang share screen ko lang to guys okay share screen where is it okay can you see the screen guys malaki natin okay can you see the screen parang mali yung wait 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 okay let's proceed we have music of the philippines during pre-hispanic era so if we're talking about pre-hispanic era we're talking about a very indigenous music of the filipinos especially in the north and south of the philippines we're talking about north we're talking about the cordillera people cordillera music if we're talking about south we're talking about the mindanaoan music so if we're talking about music usually in the philippines one of the most um, considered pre-hispanic meaning wala pa yung mga spanyol guys may music na mga pilipino especially for those who are in a tribe or in a certain cult or cultural group here in, especially in the philippines there are several um, ethnic groups here in the philippines meron din tayo sa of course very obvious here in our place in cordillera we still um, pressure those um, um, cordillera music same with the um, mindanawan music so let's proceed music of the philippines during the pre-hispanic time so long before the arrival of the spaniards asians filipino were living in a scattered barangays and ruled by different chief chains or captains so barangay or barangay head barangay so in terms of okay although they were living separately they were similar uh, they they were similar in many ways their religion mode of dressing houses system of government and marriage practices and economic activities in the short they were refined and civilized they possess a distinct culture that is that disguised them from each other or from other races just like for example if we're in, here in cordillera we have the mountain province compared with the uh, uh, mountain province compared with the abra iba yung music ng abra iba rin yung music ng mga taga mountain province so there are different types of music just like here in benguet there are but they have common times or common common type of instrument but most most of it they have this okay. someone is joining okay so if we're talking about um if we're talking about um different cultures especially in the cordillera we have so many different uh, tribes sometimes they consider it as their types of in terms of their music they have his um, wedding dance you know wedding music or we have their rhymes their chanting they have their synchronized um, all this synchronized uh, music in terms of their culture or tribe so they have their how, how do they court courting music or court dance and then so in short we're talking about different cultures and with their different shared cultures as well as their contribution that's why it have the pre-spanish so during that time we already have the original music of the filipino so let's proceed so music of the philippines pre-hispanic era natives were without a doubt music lovers Tama mali. especially if you have occasions especially wedding ceremony burial all types of occasions here in the philippines there are several types of music that they're going to apply so it depends on their culture so each community had their own sets of musical instrument especially the cordillera they have the gongs different sizes of gongs 
different kinds of flute instrument, different kinds of, of drum instrument, ganyan. So here, in the account of Bigafeta, the official historian of Magellan Expedition woman from Cebu were harmoniously playing cymbal, plain tiles, nose flute, bamboo mouth organ, yung mga ganun, bamboo mouth organ, nose flute, meaning pag sinabing nose flute, we're talking about a very popular nose flute na they are going to use the nose for you to play the instrument. It's not in mouth flute. So we bamboo mouth organ, so brass was well, gangsa, especially here in the Cordillera, very popular, gangsa. Flute, bansik, long drums, hulibaw, or bamboo harp, or subing, bamboo harp, subing. And then water whistle, paiyak, and guitar bugot, and xylophone, agong, and drum hugo. Those are uh, terms and other terms, especially for those with a close and open parenthesis, that's uh, the other term. Okay, next, passion. If we're talking about passion, one of the sa atin is Christianity. So if we're talking about passion, Spanish passion is a Philippine epic narrative of the Philippine passion, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The standard element of epic poetry are interwoven with a colorful, dramatic theme, especially if they're going to sing, to chant, and show their um, all this uh, love of music in terms of uh, religion. So there's a church music, and a chamber music. And then, so the entire of the text is chanted during the Lenten season, and particularly Holy Week. Here in the Philippines, very popular, of course, in the Cebu, as well as here in the Manila, don yung tatawo nila don yung, yung passion de, how do you call that? Passion Passion de Gallo. <laughs> so we're talking about, especially if, if you visit the most popular church in Manila, yung Quiapo Church. Diba yung the Black Nazareth? Napapanood nyo yun, guys? The Black Nazareth. Talagang, they are so devoted with that. So, ayun. That's a sample. And it's popular Filipino Catholic devotion. Okay. Next, we also have the text is an is an adaptation of the pre-Hispanic art of chanting epic poems as a form of oral tradition after Christianity was introduced by the sponge. The passion cycle was adapted into a native art. So that's it. So ayan. Passion. Mahal. The Black Nazareth. The indigenous form of a passion was the first written down by Gaspar Aquino de Belen in Ang Ang Mahal na Passion ni Jesu Cristo, Panginoon natin na Tola. That, or in other words, we have the, the sacred passion of Jesus Christ our Lord that is a poem. But next, written, of course, this is a proof written in 19, uh, uh, 1703. So, kailan na occupy which is 1500s 1521 to be exact hanggang umabot tayo ng more than 300 years so, that's it okay for our pre-hispanic music we also have here Tugulaylay Bicolano folk song Tugulaylay is originated from words taghoy which means layman and alalay which means sustain it's grieving over such a tragic event. We also have here, it says that, Tugulaylay, Pan Panambitan or Tagulaylay is a funeral song of eulogies. It is a mourning of mournful song. It's more an a sorrow song. Uh, usually, it's a calm song. Yeah. Kumintang. If we're talking about kumintang, Maganito, kukumintang. It's, it, this is for dancing. But for music, we have kumintang is the name given to a several distinct styles, techniques, and forms in the music and dance, probably, probably originating in the areas used by the early Spanish cartographers and chronicles to denote a large province centering around what is known as Batangas. So if we're talking kumintang, 
it is a lovely song. Umintang. Ganun lang yan, guys. Love song. Early 19th century, travelers' accounts often mention the Kumintang as a Tagalog chant national. So, describing them as a dance song performed as pairs of men and women with texts concerned love and courtship, all accounts mention a glass of coconut wine passed from hand to hand by the dancer as they sing or as they perform. So, technically speaking, guys, the most important to remember, especially in having a Kumintang, is how you're going to perform it. You're going to sing it properly. Lovely singing. Because it's more on a love song. Or sometimes they call this in in a, call this, um, uh, what the other term of love song again? Um, ballad song. Ayan. In Western part naman yun, guys. In Western, in Western uh, terminologies. So, in the 20th century, Francisca Reyes Aquino, ito, very famous, Francisca Reyes Aquino, the Bakumintang, the Circular Hand and Risk Movement, also known as Kunda. Yun nga, sabi ko. Si Francisca Reyes Aquino, guys, is a very popular author of a book na mga folk dances. Ang dami niyang volume of folk dances, Francisca Reyes Aquino. So that's volume 1, 2, 3. I even have the volume 1 and 2 <laughs> during my college days. So, punong-puno yun ng different Folk, so, uh, folk dances. For the folk dances, you can see musical notes which are going to play. And then, of course, for the dancers, they will going to perform. So, most of the book of Francisca Reyes Aquino are well organized with notations, musical notes, especially if you're going to perform a certain um, steps, dances, and then Filipino folk dance. Next, among present day of, of aficionados of musical and dance event called Awitan, Padangguhan, in and around the city of Batangas. Kumintang also refers to a guitar plucking style considered the most melod melodious and beautiful of all guitar styles accompanying an old Kinanluran style of pang Paganduhan dance song. So it's a very large uh, scope in terms of talking about Kumintang. So it will depend. So it, it does it goes with a dancing step or dancing hand step, or it's more and how you're going to sing your kumintang. Next, danza. From the word danza, we're talking about a danza, an old Ositan danza, old spell danka, was an old Ositan form and a lyric poetry developed in the late 13th century among the troubadours. Also, danza is a relate, related to the English term dance. Uh, kumbaga, kadansa. Or the other word is not kadensa. Ganyan. So we're talking about dance again and was an often accompanied by dancing, a closely related from a balada or balares. But yung mga nagbabali, ganyan. Had a more complex structure and it's related to a ballet. But unrelated to a ballad, which is more on a love song, both terms derive from Ositan words to a dance, dancer, or baller. baller. Okay, the verses of the dancer were sung by a soloist while the refrain sung by a choir. Umaga, we have the soloist and the choir. Umaga, soloista. The first, especially if you're the who can perform the melody part and most of the choir will be doing the accompaniment part. Kumbaga, they are going to have a chorus. Um, tapos, how, while the soloist will do the most of the melodies. But for nowadays, there are melodies that are being uh, considered as a background, especially if they are going to combine each and every one. Yun yung medyo pansatin, guys. That will be more challenging kung magagawa natin sa klase natin. Okay. The Balita is the song tradition associated with the Visayas region in the same way the Kondiman and Kumintang are associated with the ancient Tagalog music. Also, bal Balita, the music of the Balita is usually written in three-four time. Again, guys, that is three-four, not three-fourths. So that is, if you're talking about music, do not um, call this 
do not say it in a fraction sign. You just read the number 3, 4. So, ganyan, 3, 4 time. It is also danced to through it, through it originally was, was something that was merely sung. This folk air has a more developed form called Balitao Romana Sada. So we're talking about Sada, it's one of the famous uh, type of Visayan folk song, Balitao. So traditionally, instrument used for a company for Balitao was the three-string coconut shell, guitar, Harp was adopted as an instrument of a choice of because of the chords will be played on it. So when you're going to perform it to the modern musician, remember you five five string or you have the six string the casual. So we're talking about balitao again. Again, this is a ex extemporaneous exchange of love verses between man and woman. So as easy as that. It's a combination of how you're going to harmonize between another. We're going balitao. Okay, we have here characteristics of pre-Hispanic era music. First, more conserv conservative style of sacred music. Especially, they are very concerned how are going to re how are they going to preserve, especially their music. And that's why we are very grateful especially in Cordillera in, in all, as well as Mindanao, they were able to restore or they were able not to restore, they were able to preserve the original music of the Filipino. Okay. Next, they play music by singing indigenous musical instrument like bamboo canes, palm leaves, and as well as bark patri. So very popular here in the Philippines, most of, most of the instruments are made of bamboos and dami especially in cordilleras they are they they are so very well this um creative and creating different bamboo instruments next religious and musically salvation of self expression especially here in the philippines we give um all this big respect especially in terms of religion sometimes we don't we don't question some of the religion in terms of how to be going to create their music or recording. Sometimes, I mean, for nowadays, mga bago, we have the ministry, ganyan, musical ministry. But for the old style, of course, in terms of, of this, uh, the sharing of our Spaniard uh, leaders, as well as the priests, they let us uh, call this, um, encourage us to sing different um, church songs. Yeah. Recite at him. Yes, very obvious. Mostly simple two-note music. Music was composed of few notes, especially in Cordillera. Pam, pam, pam. That's why in, in a one set of a gong or gangza, is seven, it's only considered of seven notes. Very uh, limited. The same with the bamboo flutes. Meron yung kan. But nowadays, meron na yung talagang, it's the modern flute that it can create most of the chromatic notes. Yeah. We're talking about chromatic notes. We're talking about all all notes from do, do sharp, re, re sharp, mi, fa, sol, sol sharp, and so on. It goes step by step. Especially if you're playing the piano, white, black, white, black, white, white, black. Because it's three, two, tatlong black, tat, dalawang black. So white, black, white, black, white, black, white, white, black, white, black, white, white. If you have the piano, if you have the piano, dyan, if you can. See, then three, two, three, two. So that's your guide. So that's it. Next. So I'll show you the next one, guys. Wait lang. Okay. Share, new share. Wait lang, guys. Ah. Okay, wait lang. Um, okay. So very important, guys, as a Filipino, and exemption, exemption with our um, Chinese student, please bear with our lesson for today because we're going to tackle the... Nakikita niyo ba, guys? We have the two national symbols of the Philippines. Can you see the, our slide? Okay, nakikita. Good. 
Let me know guys ah, baka mamaya hindi nyo pala nakikita. So we have the two national symbol of the Philippines. First, the national anthem and second, we have the national flag. The national anthem guys, the Philippine national anthem was composed by Julian Felipe. Julian Felipe, Julian Felipe is a pianist, a very well-known pianist during that time. And it's being instructed by General Emilio Aguinaldo to compose a national anthem or national song, ang tawag doon, national anthem. During this time, um, Julian Felipe, before, kung narin, June 11, June 11, Julian Felipe represent a music, which is in terms of a piano music. Then, General Emilio Aguinaldo instructed Julian Felipe to create it as a march song. March. Marching. Kasi dapat, kasi medyo pag piano kasi guys, it's more on more a solemn style. Ganyan. So sabi niya, can you create it in a marching style? That's like me. So it was the first played publicity on June 12 after a day. Kasi June 11, piano. So nag-request si General Emilio Aguinaldo as the first Filipino president, it played should be played in a march, march uh, type or march tempo. So it was played publicity on June 12, 1898, by the town band of San Francisco de Malabon, marching band. So sila yung tumuktog on an occasion of the proclamation of the Philippine Independence Day and unfurling of the Philippine flag in Kawit Cavite. If you can remember the five peso song, five peso bill. Yung kulay green, yun yun. So, yung ginaganon nila yung flag doon sa bahay ni General Emilio Aguinaldo. So, it's being played by the San Francisco de Malabon Marching Band. Okay, next. For more than a year, Philippine National Anthem was remained without any lyrics. So, syempre, music-music lang until... Jose Palma wrote a poem entitled Filipinas. So, ang title ng kanyang poem is Filipinas in Spanish, which became, which became the original words of the anthem. So, nilapat nila yung Filipinas sa ating uh, music na ginawa ni Julian Felipe. So, during that time, after a year, Jose Palma, who wrote, was, who wrote the first lyrics of our Philippine National Anthem. Next, we also have during the American colonial rule of the Philippines, the Spaniard lyrics of the anthem was translated into an English. So, the Philippine hymn naman ang tawag doon. So, for the Spanish type, it is Filipinas. For the American um, eras, we have the Philippine hymn by the Filipino writer Com uh, Camille Ocias and an American A.L. Lane. So, sila nag-translate translate nila ng English. That's why our parents, siguro pag yung parents yung nasa 40 or 50 plus na ngayon, they know how to sing the Philippine National Anthem in English. So sa atin, nasanay tayo ng Tagalog. So finally, during the term of the Philippine of President Ramon Magsaysay, two Filipinos of, by the name of Julian Cruz, Balmaceda, and Idel Polso Santos translated the lyrics into Filipino words, which is already entitled Lupang Hinirang. Which is yung yun alam natin. That's, that's we already um, familiar with. And become an official version of the Philippine National Anthem in 1956. So that's it. For the national flag, of course, the symbol of the national flag of eight stars. I ate eight stars. Um, eight rays of the sun and three golden stars. Red stripe, blue stripe, white triangle. Or the sun represents the beginning of a new era. The eight rays of the of of the sun stand for the eight provinces like we have Tarlac, Cavite, Manila, Batangas, Pampanga, Nebesia, Bulacan, and Laguna. Those are the famous um, um, provinces of the Philippines during that time. And the three stars are Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. So the colors in the flag, the white color represents peace and purity. The red stripe represents courage and bravery. The blue stripe is for noble ideas. So one country, two flags, probably unique in the world that this country has a flag for peacetime and the flag for wartime. Pag peacetime, yung blue nasa taas. Then pag merong war, nagbabaliktad yung red nasa taas. Tama? 
So, ganun. Pag meron tayong war, red sa taas. If it is peace, blue. So, tayo lang yung ganung flag na nagbabalik that. The other flags, hindi. So, that's it. Then, I will show you guys an arrangement. So, let me show you before we end. New slide again. So, I hope it's here. Saglit lang ah. Wait, wait, wait. Lupang hiniran. Oh, wait, not there. Guys, naririnig niyo pa rin ba ako? Can you hear me? Guys? Yes, sir. Good. So, I will let you hear the... Wait. Ito na. Pakinggan muna natin, ha? I hope this will play. Wait. Mali, 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 mali. Where is that? Philippine National Anthem. Philippine National Anthem. SATP. Okay. Pakinggan natin to guys. Let's hear the national anthem. All right. So this is in English. Next, I have a range here and I will give you the notes. So wait, let's see. Okay, okay, Oops, not that. Philippine National Anthem. Okay, wait, wait, let me share. Okay, can you see this, guys? Kita nyo ba? So this is, this is my software where I compose as well as arrange my pieces. So this is for you guys. So the Philippine National Anthem by Julian Philippe and Jose Palma, arranged by uh, Nep Museno. So listen. This is in a choral version. I can give you the individual voices. I will give it later so that you can practice. So as you can see, singing the Philippine National Anthem should be less than a minute. So based on our on our music here, I'm going to show you. So it's talking about Philippine National Anthem, guys. Very important to consider is the time signature. The time signature is 2-4. Ito yun, guys. So. 2-4. Meaning up, down, Bayang magiliw, anda awit. It's not one, two, three, four. It's never one, two, three, four. That's why, as early as now, please, if you are in, already in the field, teach the proper way how to conduct or how to lead your students, your kid students, how to sing the Philippine national. So, hands up. After two, after two, 
Ready? One and bayang down up down up down up down up. So that will be considered. Um, technically speaking, guys, if you can see here, there is one sharp. This is one sharp. Nakikita niyo sharp na That's in the key of G. Originally, the compose of our beloved Julian Felipe is in the key of F. But there were studies during that time, I think 2000, that they need to itaas nila yung key. So from key of F, naging key of G na ngayon. But some schools are still singing the key of F. But here in Baguio, most of us are our most marching band, orchestra, as well as they, they already shifted to key of G as ordered by the deaf ed, I guess. I'm not sure because during my time, they told it my topic in terms of its Filipino anthem. I'm